three companies had been awarded the opportunity to compete for national security payload launches. I want to go through step by step to show you pretty much how SpaceX was the underdog just 10 years ago and how they've evolved to be now the workforce for the United States and the entire world. The contract that was just awarded was the National Security Space Launch Phase 3 launch contract which is a pool of companies, in this case, three companies, that were awarded the opportunity to apply for additional launches in the future. And these three companies were not necessarily a surprise because of how the uh, industry has evolved over time, but they were a surprise if you go back in time a decade ago. And my name is Lara Forsick. I've been in the industry for 20 years now. I've been watching this for over a decade. I'm the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical. And it's just amazing to me how this has evolved. So I want to go through some things, uh, including past awards and lawsuits, to just describe to you the evolution of, of SpaceX in the view of not just the space industry, but the view of the very conservative national security payload arena space. Did I say that right? <laughs> Let's go back in time to a decade ago, April of 2014, where the U.S. Air Force awarded a block buy to United Launch Alliance, ULA. And at that time, they were pretty much the only launch service provider for national security payloads. But SpaceX knew that they were up and coming. They knew that they had a launch vehicle that could compete with the Atlas and the Delta. And so what happened was SpaceX sued the Air Force over these 22 uh, launches that were purchased by the U.S. Air Force. I won't go too much into that history. It wasn't the entire block buy that the Air Force gave to ULA. It was just the majority of it. And, um, you know, SpaceX rightly did not think that was fair. So less than a year later in 2015, that was actually settled when the Air Force decided to open up competition for that block buy. So in this case, back a decade ago, SpaceX wasn't saying that we should get these awards over ULA. It was saying that we should have a chance to get these awards over ULA. We should have a chance of stepping on this stage and having the opportunity to launch these national security payloads for the U.S. government. But it was not the last time that SpaceX would butt heads with the U.S. Air Force in terms of launch. In 2019, just five years ago, when SpaceX was already starting to launch quite frequently, so there was no denying that SpaceX was a major player here, SpaceX lost a bid to compete for a U.S. Air Force, what they call it, launch service agreements competition, which was awarded to three launch service providers that were developing rockets that were not yet operational. So those awards went to ULA for Vulcan, Blue Origin for New Glenn, and to Northrop Grumman. Do you remember Omega, where strangely that A at the end is capitalized? <laughs> I don't know why they did that. Um, so Omega was the uh, follow-on from Ares One and from Liberty, and um, it kind of faded away after it didn't win any more contracts. Omega and you know Vulcan and New Glenn were chosen by the Air Force in 2019 over anything that SpaceX was developing. SpaceX ended up losing that protest. So those three awards that were awarded, actually it may have been 2018, those three awards to Blue Origin ULA and Northrop Grumman, they stayed. But that did not deter SpaceX from developing its own launch vehicles on its own. You know, at that point, Falcon 9 was already operational. So I assume they were wanting funding to develop Starship. Even though SpaceX lost that bid protest, they ended up winning in the end because the Air Force did end up choosing United Launch Alliance and SpaceX and not Northrop Grumman and not Blue Origin for its National Security Space Launch Phase 2 service procurement. So um, even though you know SpaceX did not get that extra money, they ended up winning that award that would have them launching Falcon 9s for the Air Force, which is what we've seen today. We've seen ULA and SpaceX launching national security payloads for the US government. The award that was announced at the end of day yesterday that awarded contracts to three companies for the opportunity to win launches, um, there's actually two different splits here. There's larger launches and smaller launches. I'm not gonna go into that difference. You can go look this up if you really want to, but basically you can see how the landscape changes because Blue Origin's back in it. 
you see how ULA and SpaceX are both competing here. Um, and it's possible that SpaceX is competing both for Falcon and for Starship in the future. You have ULA, which is focusing now on Vulcan, which proved itself back in January. And you have Blue Origin, which is still working on New Glenn. It's hoping to launch a New Glenn this year for the first time. So you can really see how the landscape changes where a decade ago, SpaceX really had to fight for even the opportunity to bid, whereas now it's just a given that they're going to be chosen because they are the ones who are launching the vast majority of payloads in the world. Uh, a lot of them are their own Starlinks, but even if you look to see the government payloads, I mean, SpaceX is launching far more government payloads than ULA is at this point, just because SpaceX is launching way more than ULA is. And of course, some of that is having to do with the fact that Vulcan was delayed because of Blue Origin's engines, but now Blue Origin is delivering on its BE-4 engines and ULA Vulcan is just slowly hopefully going to ramp up operations we saw it launch once in January and I don't know when the next launch is going to happen um, but you can see just how now um, SpaceX is the obvious favorite and you've got ULA kind of being a uh, you know you've got ULA really trailing in importance here um, which goes to show you how the landscape might change again if ULA is purchased so there had been rumors since last year that there is a potential that the United Launch Alliance is going to be purchased by a group or another company. Um, there are various rumors. Blue Origin is one of those that is rumored to be interested in purchasing ULA. And so the landscape might change again as ownership changes. So we're just going to have to see how things play out. But I just find it all fascinating how much can change in just a short time, relatively short, just 10 years or even five years if you look back to when that last lawsuit was. It, things change so rapidly. Who remembers Omega anymore? <laughs> like, it's just kind of amazing how it, when it comes to even the major players, Northrop Grumman is a major player, just the landscape changes so much. It's really hard to predict the future, but I'm going to ask you to do that. So I am wondering right below who you think is going to be the winner in the next five years in terms of launches. Is it going to be Starship dominating once Starship becomes more operational? We see that higher cadence of launches. Or is it going to be another player? Um, maybe Vulcan's going to step up. Maybe New Glenn's going to step up. Maybe there's going to be some other launch vehicle. Maybe you know, Rocket Lab will have Neutron or you know something's going to happen that will shake things up again. So let me know in the comments what you think.